Well, hello, folks. So, there has been a request uh, to have me do a startup of a session, what I would do every night. And that's what I'm doing right now. So, this is my what I do in the winter time. I image from my astronomy shed. I don't do it outside. I don't set up outside in the front yard with my tripod or or a scope bug. I, I do everything in, uh, here from the shed because of the, the weather. Anyway, so I all I have to do is come out, open up the shed, and I will take the lens caps off. Okay, saw that. And now I just come over here to my computer and I'm gonna fire it up. So let me there we go. Open up the computer, turn it on, give it a second. And I'll move it closer. The other thing I do is I turn my little setup on and I turn my mount on. Okay. And I'll turn this over here so you can see it. Computer's on. And I will now I turn on the heater some certain temperature I now turn on astrophotography tool okay if all goes well I'm gonna be imaging the double cluster in HA yes you heard me HA I'm also going to be moving on to Heinz Nebula and I may start M1, which is the Crab Nebula. Okay, well that's it. Everything else I do, I do from inside my nice warm house. I'm Kurt Zepatello and you're watching AstroQuest 1. Okay, well, uh, it's the next night. Uh, I had some problems with the program that I usually make these videos on last night, and fortunately, it's actually not too bad tonight, or it's it's actually, I'm going to take a chance on it. But uh, let's uh, start her up. I'm in the house, and I first use this program called AnyDesk to do a lot of my work. But before I open up AnyDesk, I have to open up uh, Chrome remote desktop it's kind of bizarre but here we go all right here's chrome remote desktop i could use this but i actually like this any desk program better i used to use team viewer but team viewer i started having a lot of problems with it so i've been using this this any desk and this this works really well actually the person that set me on any desk is none other than trevor jones from astro backyard Okay, so I've got my, I turned it on outside and I'll check my cooling temperature and yep, it's 15 degrees, minus 15 degrees, right where I set it. Now what I do, come over here, turn on the scope, unpark it, minimize it, and I'm gonna turn on the focuser. Okay. And I'll turn on the filter wheel. And now what I'm going to do is, I'm, I'll just leave it on luminosity for now. And I'll do the exposure at uh, five seconds. Okay. And the first thing I do is I'm going to go on to a star. I'm actually going to go on to Merrick. I'm not going to go on to my target yet. And this is what I say, this is what I was talking about. I have such a poor field of view that if I go onto the target, the target's behind some trees right now. So there's no point going on the target, but I can go on to a pre-target, if you will. Let's go find my target. Now, I use APT, astrophotography tool, and I use Nina, as you're going to see. Uh, APT has more stars in its built-in database. So that's one good thing about APT. Let's go to. And away it goes. I can actually put it turn on live view and you'll actually see the uh, 
see everything moving around. Yeah, it's a little bit cloudy. We'll see what we get. This right here, that's a spot on my sensor. Hopefully it's clear enough. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Not great, but you can barely see the stars in there. Hopefully it'll be good for at least for this tutorial. And hopefully those, it's supposed to clear up somewhat tonight. So maybe I, um, I may not be imaging much tonight. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, I am going to plate solve now. Minecraft objects, Eric. And I use that ASTAP uh, plate solver program. That's been working real well for me lately. So, and there it's already solved. A sink. Then we go to objects. Go to it again. And press go to. And it's plate solving now. Hopefully these clouds will go away. Okay, there we go. Okay, plate solving is done. So now I'm gonna make sure it's synced there and I'm gonna sync it onto my mount, make sure it's synced to there and I can actually turn it off now. All right, my mount is plate solved. So now if I go to the object, even though it's behind some trees, it should be pretty close. Now usually what I do right now since I'm not on my target object yet, I want to maximize the amount of time I get on it. So the, the double cluster, which I'm going after first, I've only got that for an hour and a half. So I will actually start imaging it even bef even while it's still in the trees so I can get the most amount of time on it. So what I do now is I will do the focusing on this object, and then I'm just going to go to the my target object and just start imaging, even though it's still in the trees. Now, here's what I do. I use Nina to focus it. So I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to open up Nina. And I'm just going to go over here to turn on the camera. Now, ideally, I'm going to keep it on luminosity. I told you I was going to go use uh, image uh, HA tonight. But for this tutorial right now, I'm just going to do it with luminosity because it focuses quicker on luminosity. Okay, and we're going to go on imaging. Make this thing a little bigger. Now, I advise you guys to do either, if you're new to this and you haven't started it, it would probably be better if you stick with either Nina or APT rather than doing both like what I'm doing. And the reason I'm not doing what I'm advising you to do is because I got so used to APT, I know it really well, but it, it for a while it did not have a great focusing program. And Nina has an awesome focusing program. So that's why I use it. Now, apparently, here, let's see what it's doing right now. Apparently, APT has a new focusing program and that uses all the stars. Hey, this isn't that bad. Look at that 240. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good value and it's showing 52 stars. But I'm going to see if I can get it better than that. So I'm going to go through the, the autofocus method. I'll show you what I mean. But I haven't tried the new autofocusing program in APT yet. I will at some point, see if it's as good as Nina's. Nor am I that good with Nina yet, where I can do this whole thing, where I, where I can actually manually do what I do in Nina. So that's why I had to manually go to the target, because I'm still waiting for my real target to come, to come into the field of view, if you know what I mean. So that's why I use both programs right now, because I really love this autofocus routine. It's just, it's super duper as far as I'm concerned. My imaging has gone, gotten so much better because of my focus has gotten that much better. So 
I'm actually going to hope, I'm hopefully I'm going to uh, send this over or alert Queeve the Lazy Geek, who's the wizard of Nina, and maybe he'll give me some pointers on how to do everything in Nina too. So I'm going to try to do both programs, do everything in Nina one day and do everything in APT uh, another day and see what happens. But uh, rather than doing this both, what I'm doing right now. Okay, there it is. Let's see what uh, kind of values I've got. So I'm going to go back to image and we'll see what I got. It didn't really change that much. So I was already pretty well focused in on this object uh, earlier. So go figure. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it really doesn't change that much. But as I said, I love this Nina's Nina and I love the way it auto focuses. It's just incredible. So now what I do. And as I said, I know people are probably going, man, you are an idiot for doing it this way, but whatever. I really can do this real quickly. I can do it almost in my sleep. So I, it really doesn't bother me to, to do both, but I, I understand that it's probably better I choose one program or another eventually. So what I do now is I just uh, turn off Nina. Actually, I just minimize Nina because I'll probably come back to, I, I do more focusing if I have to switch uh filters or after a couple hours i might come back and check on it and see if i'm still in focus and so i usually turn it back on so i just end up minimizing it okay but now i'm going to come back to apt and now what i do now that i'm in focus i'm going to go to my object my real object, the one my target object, even though it's behind some trees, it's the double cluster. And I'm just going to go, okay, and go to. I'll turn it on live view again so you can see what's going on. And there it goes. <laughs> so you can see it's in the trees right now. But since it's winter time. Even though it's in the trees, you can still see it. So it's good enough where I can actually plate solve it. Okay, so now what do I do? I'm gonna turn on plate solving in. So I can really narrow it in. Bring it into my frame, exactly where I want it. Double cluster, Go solve. It's already done, pink it. Plate solve it. <laughs> Go to. Okay, is it done? That's how I have it framed. I can shut it down. And now what I would do is I would turn on PhD guiding. Okay, connect all. Auto select and let it rip. It's probably going to be uh, buzzing me every once in a while too because it's going to hit a branch. Okay. And now what I would now next thing I do is I'm gonna just start my imaging sequence. Even though it's in the trees, I know it's gonna be out of the trees pretty soon. So that's what I mean. I, I start maximizing my my imaging time. So I'm already focused, I'm already plate solved, I'm already guiding. All I have to do is just find my plan and I'll a double cluster and I'll change it a bit. Edit. And I'm on luminosity right now, so I'll just do 60 right now. Or 50, it doesn't really matter. I'm just showing you what I'm doing right now. All right. Okay. And press start. And away I go. Okay, well, that's about it, folks. And as I said, I don't advise you doing both programs like I do. But, uh, you know, what can I say? I, I really like APT. It's a great program. I can bounce through it real quickly. The only thing I... Have misgivings about is the autofocus in APT, but they may have fixed it. I really like Nina. I think Nina is a little bit more powerful, and the autofocus with Nina is awesome. The one thing is Nina doesn't have as much um, stars in its home database, or at least not yet. And I don't know Nina as well, but I'm sure you can probably do exactly everything I did in APT. I think I'm sure you can do that in Nina as well. So that's my two cents for.
Oh, and uh, as I said, uh, I'm going to, I'm actually going to, once I get out of the trees, I'm actually going to refocus it and you doing HA on it right tonight because of the, the moon is out. But uh, anyways, that's about uh, all I have for you folks. I f hope you found this interesting and I apologize for being tongue twisting over. I'm trying to do this all in one, one shot. Okay, last thing I wanted to show you before I forget was this uh, curve. This is the curve for the HA data. A lot of people have been asking me, does it work for narrowband imaging as well? And, I, and yes, it does. Although the time on it, the exposure time is 10 seconds. So for LRGB, I use five second exposure time. For narrowband, I use 10 second exposure time for doing the autofocus. Okay, not quite done. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. This is a double cluster and this is HA right now. So I went back and uh, re after I got out of the trees, I went and re refocused it with Nina and I'm getting some great results. I'm really happy with this. Okay, if you're wondering what screen capture programs I'm using, the one I had trouble with last night is this one called Mavari or Mavavi. And I use it for editing, and it works really well for editing. But for some reason, my screen capture part, it really wigs out my system. or it, So I've had a lot of troubles with it. So if anybody has any better suggestions, please let me know. And the one I'm using tonight, in which I'm using in its place, because I had to redo this whole thing, is I'm using ice cream apps. And ice cream apps always works. The only, pro the only thing with ice cream apps is it doesn't show me in the little corner. So that's why I was using Mavari. Both of those programs were recommended to me by Chuck from Chuck's Astro Photography. And uh, I really like his videos and everything else. So I really have a lot of respect for Chuck too. So he's uh, another great resource for astrophotography. Anyways, we'll see you later.